Spelljammer Academy Orientation Introduction This adventure, designed for 3 to 7 first level characters, is the first in a series of four adventures. It is set in Spelljammer Academy on the island of Nimbrel, many miles southwest of the Cholton Peninsula in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting. Background Welcome to the Spelljammer Academy. Promising recruits are trained here under the tutelage of experienced spelljammers who prepare fledgling spacefarers for the perils of wild space and the astral sea. Cadets learn the finer points of ship-to-ship -ship combat, space exploration, and, in some cases, clandestine operations. The newest batch of recruits has just arrived after a long, arduous sea voyage, but there's still much to do. Although it's business as usual at the Spelljammer Academy, the new cadets soon learn that strange things are afoot. The purpose of this adventure is to introduce the characters to the Spelljammer Academy and foreshadow an unknown threat. Overview This adventure takes approximately two hours to play and is split into three parts. Part 1 Welcome to Wild Space the recruits undertake a quick combat trial on the simulations deck so that the academy personnel can assess their skills. Part 2. Academy Orientation After the simulation, the new cadets receive a crash course on the academy's purpose and general layout as they complete a laundry list of tasks to acclimate to their new home. Part 3. Intruder Alert the cadets deliver a crate of supplies to Mert the Merciless, the head of the academy, but also discover that their cargo contains a deadly surprise. Adventure Hooks All the characters have volunteered, for whatever reason, to join Spelljammer Academy, a shadowy enclave of spellcasters and swords for hire situated on the remote and mysterious island of Nimbrel. While the characters are still encouraged to develop backstories, they should be looking for adventure with few long-term bonds to tie them to their homelands. The campaign takes the characters to the stars and beyond, and there might be no coming back afterward. Orientation throws the characters right into the action. To maximize the impact of part one of the adventure, you might choose to downplay initial introductions and discussions of the characters' backstories, bringing up any connection between the characters only after the adventure's initial encounter has been resolved. Part 1. Welcome to Wild Space Spelljammer's Academy's newest recruits are brought to the simulations deck for a quick combat trial so the Academy personnel can assess their skills in readiness. The magic of the simulations deck puts a unique spin on the training session, dropping player characters straight into the action. Right into the action! When everyone is ready to begin, Roll for initiative, then describe the following. You stand on the deck of your Spelljammer ship, Moon Raider, even as explosions obliterate two of its masts and hurl a dozen of your fellow sailors into wild space. Distant stars and wheeling clouds of multicolored gas spin around you as the first pirate galleon slams into the Moon Raider's starboard side, and a gust of foul wind washes over you as the galleon's air envelope merges with your own. Seconds later, your vessel is boarded by astral reavers, humanoids possessed of strange features, waving cruel weapons and unleashing blasts of magic. Captain Sardex lies on the deck nearby, her body ruined by shrapnel. Hold the top deck, she snarls with her dying breath. Grant them no quarter! This encounter starts in the thick of the action. The characters are in the midst of the magical illusion used to train Spelljammer Academy cadets. The shock of being plunged into illusionary simulation has left them disoriented and unable to sense that what they see is only in their minds. Both the characters and the players should believe that the simulation is real. When your players ask the inevitable questions about how they got here, use the following to guide your answers. The characters know they are crew members on Moon Raider, but they have no recollection of events prior to the Reavers' attack. The characters are new members of the crew, making their first journey into wild space. At a guess, it seems likely that the Reavers have used some kind of magic to disorient Moon Raider's crew, hoping to make it easier to seize the ship. 
The characters know Captain Sardax and understand her death leaves it up to them and the other surviving crew members to repel the Reavers. The characters know and trust each other. Moon Raider is their ship and they are bound to defend it. The forecastle map shows the layout of the area that the characters are defending. They are the only sailors still alive in this section of the ship. Fighting the Reavers At the start of combat, place two Astral Reavers, bandits, at the edge of the forecastle area. Don't roll initiative for these enemies. Instead, all Reavers act at the end of the initiative order, after the characters have taken their turns. More Reavers then appear during the round, as described further on. At the start of each character's turn, roll on the battle events table to determine a random event, which should include the appearance of new Reavers. As each new enemy appears, roll on the Astral Reavers table to determine a special quality for them, and use these descriptions to help identify specific Reavers in combat. When you've played two full rounds of combat, Proceed to the End Simulation section. Battle Events Roll a d20. On a result of 1 to 12, a new Astral Reaver, a bandit, jumps into an unoccupied space within 30 feet of the character. On a result of 13, an explosion rocks the ship. Each creature on the deck must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw, or fall prone. On a result of 14, a second spell jamming ship soars overhead, raining arrows down on the defenders. Each character must roll a d20. On a roll of 1 to 9, they are targeted by an arrow, with plus 3 to hit, dealing 3 piercing damage on a hit. On a result of 15, an untied coil of rope slams into the character, furling and reducing their speed by half until the end of their next turn. On a result of 16, loose rigging careens across the deck, Choose a character. That character must succeed on a DC-10 dexterity acrobatics check to grab the rigging and be safely flung to an unoccupied space within 40 feet of their current position. On a failure, they stay where they are and fall prone. On a result of 17, the ship's dog, Bruno, rushes to the aid of a character of the player's choosing. The character can use a reaction to sip once from the healing keg around Bruno's neck, with no action required regaining 1d6 hit points. On a result of 18 to 20, an allied sailor on the main deck fires an arrow at a reaver, with plus 3 to hit, dealing 5 piercing damage on a hit. Astral Reavers The Reavers are cold-hearted miscreants, united only by the urge to raid and pillage. Each Reaver has the statistics of a bandit, but has a unique appearance determined by the Astral Reavers table. Astral Reaver's Table Roll a d12 On a result of 1, the Reaver has a serrated iron jaw and mechanical arm ending in an oversized pincer. On a result of 2, they have a giant goldfish bowl head containing a floating brain. On a result of 3, they have 4 arms, 2 of which are used solely to perform threatening or insulting gestures. On a result of 4, they have iridescent scales and glowing pink eyes. On a result of 5, they have enormous nose and ears. On a result of 6, they have helicopter blades mounted on their head, with a flying speed of 10 feet, with a maximum hovering altitude of 3 feet. On a result of 7, they have an infantile second head that continually spits curses. On a result of 8, they have a burning beard and breath that reeks of booze. On a result of 9, they wear a torn wedding dress stained with blood. On a result of 10, they are blue-skinned with a single large horn on their forehead. On a result of 11, they have fish-like features and needle-like teeth. And on a result of 12, they have reflective skin. End Simulation After two full rounds of combat have been resolved, End the combat by describing the following. A thunderous explosion shakes the ship, filling the air with splinters of wood. Bodies are hurled into wild space, and then everything stops. Wreckage hangs motionless. Reavers freeze in the middle of their attacks, and even the stars stop twinkling. The illusion of wild space melts away, and you find yourself in one of the magical chambers of the simulation deck. 
your memories slowly fitting back into place. You recall being warned that your first experience of a wild space simulation would be disorienting, to test your ability to function under pressure. A hulking figure emerges from the center of the explosion, a Hadazi with a missing wing flap, wearing a military uniform bristling with medals. The air around her smells like cigar smoke. As you can see, Bosun Tato growls. The Battle of Hakatha didn't go so well for Captain Sardax and her crew, but her last battle makes a good testing ground for new recruits. End simulation. The characters remember meeting the Hadazi training officer, Bosun Tato. Bosun Tato, Spelljammer Corps training officer. Hadazi, seasoned Bosun. The scars that Bosun Tato bears are testament to her status as a battle-hardened veteran. Despite having one of her wing flaps torn away long ago, she remains as capable as ever while on board a ship. Spelljammer Academy has no better person to spearhead the training of raw recruits, and Tato knows it. Never one to mince words, even when those words are directed towards those who outrank her. This old, grizzled Hazardy has a light tan skin and ebon black fur graying at the temples. She's perpetually shrouded in a thick haze of cigar smoke, the smell of which often signals her imminent arrival. Listen to what I tell you. It might just save your life. And that the battle has been an illusionary exercise conducted in one of the Academy's simulation chambers, a large circular space whose rune-inscribed walls channel potent magical power and which contain training versions of spell jamming helms, akin to those used to propel real spell jamming ships. As the simulation ends, all characters regain any lost hit points, spell slots, or limited use powers. Characters who died during the encounter discover that they were merely unconscious, and each gains one level of exhaustion from lingering psychic shock. With the training exercise complete, the new recruits are ready for debriefing and orientation. Part 2 Academy Orientation Spelljammer Academy's newest cadets are given an extensive orientation, with an assigned list of orientation tasks at hand. The characters have a chance to visit various areas of the Academy, noting which areas are off limits to stripling cadets, and the dire punishments that can be meted out to those who stray into unauthorized territory. Debriefing. When you're ready to start, describe the following. You arrived this morning on Belligerence, a chartered galley out of Waterdeep, which picked up passengers and crew in the Moonshay Isles, Boulder's Gate, Candlekeep, and Port Nyanzaru. You've come to seek fortune and glory at Spelljammer Academy, a secret enclave of spellcasters and swords for hire on the mysterious island of Nimbral. Graduates from the Academy join the Spelljammer fleet, a magical navy sworn to protect Toril and explore worlds far beyond. The Academy is carved into a 2,000-foot-high column of rock that juts up from the cliffs of the island's west coast, its multiple levels connected by stairs, ramps, and magical lifts. After docking in a sea cave at the base of the column, you marched into the simulations deck midway up the Academy spire. Your medal has been tested, and now it's time to settle in. Give the players a copy of the Spelljammer Academy map, during the character's debriefing, Botswin Tato gives them each a peerless assessment of their performance during the trial. As training officer, it's her job to whip new recruits into shape and show that everybody has room for improvement. Be appropriate and mindful of your players, however. A truly good leader isn't needlessly rude or cruel in their criticisms. After the debriefing, Botswin Tato explains the history and mission of Spelljammer Academy. Belljammer Academy While adventurers of all stripes explore Faerun and deal with the perils of ancient ruins, malevolent cults, and long-forgotten tombs, those who come through Spelljammer Academy on Nimbral strive to protect the world from far greater threats. Spelljammer Academy trains cadets for service as Spelljammers and members of the Spelljammer Corps, both branches of magical navy sworn to protect Toril 
and explore other worlds beyond. Few people know of the Academy's existence, and its leaders try to keep it that way. Merc the Merciless, also known as the Old Wolf, is Spelljammer Academy's founder and chief financial officer. He manages the institution's operations alongside a small group of powerful high-ranking officers known collectively as the Bridge. While most of its candidates are from Toril, the Academy occasionally recruits from outside Realm Space, the wild space system that is home to the planet Toril, to bring individuals with unique talents into their ranks. Jif, Githyanki, Hadazi, Plasmoids, and a myriad other peoples can join the cadets alongside folk native to Toril. The Academy was founded by Mert as part of a joint investment with the retired elf adventurer Elmander, who operates a shop on the Rock of Brol, a city built on an asteroid. Prince Andrew, the monarch of Brol, has invested heavily in the Academy, though his support has waned of late over questions regarding security within the institution. Any character with spellcasting talent qualifies to join the Spelljammers, the contingent of those able to pilot a spelljamming ship. Everyone else must join the ranks of the Spelljammer Corps. Tato informs the cadets that they must complete several orientation tasks before the day is out. The tasks can be completed in any order. Orientation Tasks All cadets, collect welcome pack from administration. All cadets, Report to quarters for bunk assignment. All cadets, report to Sky Dock for spell jamming ship inspection. Corp cadets only, collect service weaponry from Mr. Blip in stores. Spell jammer cadets only, reporting to spell jammer nexus for basic training. All cadets, complete gymnasium assault course. The task list also features a note regarding security which characters can see posted throughout the Academy. Warning! Due to recent thefts, security checkpoints are in operation throughout campus. Failure to stop when challenged will result in disintegration. If asked about the thefts, Tato reveals that several navigational charts depicting realm space were stolen recently from the Spelljammer Nexus, the training area for Spelljammer cadets. The thefts have shaken the confidence of the Academy's investors and caused them to reduce their monthly funding. Mert is not happy. Botswan Tato tells the characters to get on with their tasks, then report back to her once all the tasks are complete. Tato remains on the simulation's deck. Exploring the Academy The characters are now free to explore the campus. As described in the Academy locations, on each area noted in the orientation tasks. Security Levels Spelljammer Academy has a five-tier security system. Each tier is represented by a different color, as shown on the Security Levels table. Security Levels increase from green to gold, and each higher level has access to all areas accessible to lower security levels. Academy personnel wear uniforms in the color of their security access level. The characters are inducted as cadets, level 2, and must visit administration to collect their uniforms. To access higher security levels, Academy cadets and personnel must request a security helmet, a rigid leather cap dyed in the appropriate color. Security checkpoints are set up throughout the Academy, each guarded by three veterans. Each guard carries a short sword that has a green glowing blade. Any creature reduced to zero hit points by one of these blades is instantly turned to dust, as if affected by a disintegrate spell. Such a sword loses its magical properties if removed from the Spelljammer Academy. Security guards refuse access to anyone not wearing the appropriate attire. Security Levels Level 1 Green Visitor Areas of Access Administration except for the recording room Sea Dock except for the cargo area Simulations Deck except for the officer's mess Level 2 Red Cadet Cadet Quarters Gymnasium Spelljammer Nexus Stores Level 3 Blue Sailor Sea Dock 
including the cargo area. Sky Dock. Level 4. Purple. Officer. Administration, including the record room. Simulations deck, including the officer's mess. Level 5. Gold. Bridge. Bridge Quarters. Academy Events. As the characters explore the Academy, you can roll on the Academy Events table at any point to help bring the campus to life. Roll a D8. On a result of 1, a halfling cadet dashes past, clearly late for training. Turning a corner, they bump into a pair of plasmoid cadets and become partially stuck in one of them. After pulling themselves out and helping the plasmoids correct their uniform, the halfling runs on shouting an apology. On a result of two, two cadets face off in a game that magically projects illusionary spell jamming ships above the game board. On a result of three, a visiting GIF dignitary is inspecting the campus, escorted by academy officers. When the GIF loudly breaks wind, the officers politely carry on as though nobody heard it. On a result of four, a magical voice announces, all purple rank officers report to the Sky Dock for docking inspection. On a result of five, a manacled Mind Flayer passes by on a gurney pushed by fleet officers. The Mind Flayer wears an iron mask with bands restraining its facial tentacles. On a result of six, strange glowing fish swim through the air, phasing through walls as they go. Nobody appears bothered by them. On a result of seven, a magical voice announces, Ectoplasmic breach on the spell jammer nexus level. All personnel be prepared for supernatural anomalies. On a result of eight, two sailors walk past, discussing how, in spite of recent improvements, three out of ten exploratory fleet missions still result in all hands lost. Academy Locations the following descriptions are key to locations noted on the Spell Jamming Academy map. Administration. Security level green, visitor rank or above. Purple, officer rank or above for the record room. Administration occupies the level above the sea dock. It includes a visitor's lounge with a bar, guest rooms for visiting off-world dignitaries and the Academy reception. A record room requires purple level security to enter and contains paperwork on all academy personnel. Orientation task. Welcome pack. Characters can visit reception to collect their cadet issued welcome packs from a Thrykreen named Sokor. Sokor, Thrykreen receptionist. The Thrykreen receptionist Sokor is always busy and there's no one better suited for the job. Whether she's sorting mail passing messages, asking requests for assistance via several sending stones, or handing out welcome packs to new recruits. Her multiple arms make it all look easy. Sukur has white chitin, mottled with patches of brilliant blue and matching blue eyes. Academy accounts payable. Sukur speaking, please hold. Each pack includes the following gear. A red level cadet uniform, plus a spare and a toiletry bag, a 50 gold piece requisition voucher to spend at the academy stores, a blue level security helmet for visiting the sky dock during orientation. As the equipment is issued, staff members at reception give new cadets a rundown on the academy's security protocols as previously described in exploring the academy. Bridge quarters, security level, gold, bridge rank only. These opulent chambers are home to the Bridge, the high-ranking officers who run Spelljammer Academy. In addition to the officers' quarters, this level contains a private banqueting chamber, a library of spellbooks, and a magical communication chamber known as an oracularium. Characters visit the Bridge quarters in part 3 of this adventure. Cadet Quarters, Security Level Red, Cadet Rank or Above. This area contains a dormitory for cadets and a smaller dorm for academy graduates, the Weeping Goddess Tavern, a raucous bar that serves cadets, a refectory where cadets take their meals complete with patio dining, washrooms, the academy kitchens, and the laundry. Orientation task. 
Bunk Assignment On the character's arrival, a GIF duty officer assigns a bunk to each cadet and tells them to store their gear in their footlocker. As the characters claim their bunks, one character of your choice discovers they've been assigned to an airy bunk next to a window near the laundry. As that character walks over to drop off their gear, four cadets march towards them. One of those cadets, a confident looking moon elf, hurls her kit bag onto the bunk before the character can get there. Change of plan, Greeny. This bunk's mine now. Go tell the duty officer it wasn't to your liking and we'll get ourselves swapped over. Tell him you've traded bunks with Vina. The elf points to an unkempt bunk in the noisiest section of the dorm, just outside of the washrooms. Vina is testing the new cadets. A character who succeeds on a DC-15 Charisma Intimidation check can scare her and her friends away. Otherwise, the arrogant cadets are more than willing to use force to teach the upstart characters who's boss. Give inspiration to any character who overcomes a situation without resorting to violence. Vina and the other cadets use the bandit stat block, but carry no weapons. Instead, they make unarmed attacks, with plus three to hit, dealing two bludgeoning damage on a hit. Anyone reduced to zero hit points by such attacks is knocked unconscious for five minutes, but doesn't make their saving throws. Vina and her friends flee if they take two or more damage in total. Gymnasium Security level red, cadet rank or above. The gymnasium features a magically powered arena that can be reconfigured for a variety of training exercises. For the induction of new recruits, it is set up for a standard cadet training course. Orientation task Obstacle course Each cadet must complete the obstacle course by making ability checks or saving throws to overcome the following obstacles in order. Make a straight dash while targeted by loud illusionary explosions, requiring a successful DC-10 constitution saving throw. Leap across levitating platforms over pools of electrified water, requiring a successful DC-10 strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check. Swing from ropes through a spinning wheel of maces, requiring a successful DC-12 dexterity saving throw. Climb a slippery pole and ring a gong at the top, requiring a successful DC-12 strength athletics check. Roll initiative to determine the order of play. In each stage of the course, a character must succeed on the indicated ability check or saving throw to overcome the obstacle and move on. A character who fails remains where they are and can try again next turn. If they fail by five or more, they also take two damage of a type you choose, consistent with the test, lightning damage for the water pools, thunder damage for the explosions, and so forth. Any character reduced to zero hit points during the obstacle course falls unconscious and must sit out the remainder of the event. Give inspiration to any character who successfully completes the course. Sea Doc, Security Level Green, Visitor Rank or Above. Blue, sailor rank or above for the cargo area. This expansive sea cave contains berths for ocean-going vessels, animal pens for livestock, a dry dock for ship repairs, and a blue level restricted area for cargo storage. New recruits arriving at the sea dock are guided to reception on the administration level. Simulations deck, security level green, visitor rank or above. Purple officer rank, or above for the officer's mess. The simulation's deck features a circular main hall leading to three magical simulation chambers. Each simulation chamber is a large circular space with a domed ceiling and arcane runes carved into its stonework. Using preset command words, an officer in uniform can create a variety of simulations within any one of these chambers, filling it with an illusionary scene that affects the five senses. Botswan Tato is present here throughout the day as the characters attempt to complete their orientation tasks, running other cadets through a variety of training programs. Characters can report back to her after completing their orientation tasks. An officer's mess on this level requires a purple level security or higher to enter. The mess is where the instructors and other officers of the academy have their meals. Sky Dock, security level blue, 
sailor rank and above. Spell jamming ships frequently dock at the summit of the academy. Most vessels are assigned to the spell jammer academy, but some are independent merchant vessels delivering supplies. Security guards at the stairs leading to the sky dock challenge anyone who's trying to enter this area without proper authorization. The characters must be wearing the blue security helmets included in their welcome packs to access this area. Orientation Task Ship Inspection Twin gnome officers named Kip and Pick show the characters around a spell jamming ship, teaching them the basic operations of the vessel and explaining how equipment should be handled. Kip and Pick Whistle Slap Gnome Inspectors When nitpicking inane details, Four eyes are better than two, something that Kip and Pick whistle slap make abundantly clear. The two gnome ship inspectors wear meticulously maintained uniforms and the most feared white gloves in the academy. Both have walnut coloured skin and carefully groomed long black hair, kept in tidy buns. Kip is well known for his no nonsense attitude, which is complemented by his sister Pick's quick witted jovialness. Pick has a red scar down one cheek. A stern reminder of an inspection gone wrong. Quirk. Kip and Pick often finish one another's sentences, a trait that others sometimes find unnerving. One good turn. At some point during the inspection, have each character make a wisdom perception check. Whoever rolls the highest notices a suspicious event. On a nearby dock, a Hobgoblin Academy officer supervising the unloading of a merchant ship surreptitiously slips the merchant a platinum piece. In return, the merchant hands the hobgoblin a small bottle, which the officer conceals in his pocket. It is up to the characters to act on this information, or ignore it. If the characters report the officer, who you can name as you wish, the hobgoblin is challenged and gives up the bottle, which holds fine Yagdrasil garden rum. The officer is consigned to the brig for violation of customs charges, but the characters later learn that he is beloved among the graduate sailors. A sniff of rum is the officer's off-the-book reward for each sailor who returns alive from a mission into wild space. In bringing the officer into disrepute, the characters have surely earned some enemies. Have the players note this outcome for future adventures. Spelljammer Nexus Security Level Red, Cadet Rank and Above The Spelljammer Nexus is the exclusive training area for Spelljammer Cadets. It contains a laboratory, a library of navigation and astronomical references, a chart room, and the Nexus itself, which is a large chamber containing eight training spelljamming helms, ornate high back chairs mounted into mechanical gimbals, and encircle a 30-foot high orrery depicting realm space. Those who train here are overseen by Sayerth Abizim, a training officer. Sayerth Abizim, Spelljammer Training Officer, Human Spelljammer. Despite their extravagant showboating, Sayerth Abizim remains as mysterious as the Isle of Nimbral from which they hail. Though relatively inexperienced in comparison to some of the other instructors of the academy, Sayerth is an experienced spelljammer. Their eyes shimmer like pools of quicksilver, allowing them to see magical auras. Sayerth's quick wit and sharp tongue provide them with inexhaustible supplies of jabs and quips, though never mean-spirited, accompanied to great effect by their natural talent with illusionary magic. Sayerth's white skin is so pale so as to be almost translucent, and their blonde hair is worn in a fashionable, immaculately manicured pompadour. I make talent look good. Only Spelljammer cadets are permitted entry into the Nexus, though Spelljammer Corp cadets can observe their training from the viewing gallery. Orientation Task Basic Training Sayerth teaches Spelljammer cadets how to operate the training helms and guide the movement of miniature test ships, which move mechanically through the orrery as it spins. To complete their training, each Spelljammer cadet must use their helm to complete the realm space journey with their test vessel. Issuing commands through a Spelljamming helm is a strange sensation, more akin to thinking about moving a limb than operating controls. No ability checks are required here, 
But Sayerth asked each character involved in a training session one of the following questions. What life event in your past drove you to live in this moment right now? Tell me where you wish to be one year hence. What shall the cosmos make of you? Something inside your mind holds you back. What is it? Speak it, or it may just poison your ability to fly. Tell me honestly, who among your friends and fellow cadets do you most respect? Where did you come from? I sense a great destiny inside you, yearning for release. Tell me a tale of your past. What should I know of you? Award each character inspiration once they've answered the questions. Stores. Security level red, cadet rank and above. The Academy storerooms contain basic equipment, rations and an extensive armory. Most Academy personnel aren't allowed past the storefront, where the Quartermaster, Mr. Blip, allocates supplies through a barred window. Orientation Task Collect Service Weaponry Upon arrival, each Corp Cadet is assigned a simple or martial weapon of their choice. Cadets can also spend their 50 gold piece requisition voucher to purchase additional equipment from any of the following sources the armor, weapons, and adventuring gear or tools table from Chapter 5 of the Player's Handbook, the Equipment Pack sidebar in Chapter 5 of the Player's Handbook. No change is given for purchases, so that if a character doesn't spend the full 50 gold piece amount, any gold left on their voucher is lost. Mr. Blip, Academy Quartermaster, Autonome Quartermaster, Mr. Blip is an odd but well-loved member of the Spelljammer Academy. During a ship attack some years ago, the Autonome's creator was slain and his memories were lost. With no purpose to speak of, Mr. Blip wandered aimlessly and eventually encountered Botswan Tato in her travels. The Hadizi invited the Autonome to Spelljammer Academy and he's been there ever since. Mr. Blip is a walking encyclopedia of knowledge on all subjects related to spell jamming. Chances are, if you have a question, he's got a dozen different answers for it, and usually doesn't stop a pinning until asked to be quiet. His quarters are an absolute mess, featuring half a dozen tables piled high with tomes, curiosities, and devices of unknown purpose. Mr. Blip wears a smart-looking leather apron with scores of tools of various purposes tucked into tiny leather loops. The only other article of clothing he wears is a black felt bowler cap. The color of his eyes change depending on his mood. Green if he's feeling inquisitive, blue if he's determined, red for angry, yellow when excited, and pink if he's proud, among others. A long, smartly crafted bronze moustache completes his ensemble. If you're looking for a quick answer, I'm probably not the best place to find it. Reporting to Tato. Once all orientation tasks are complete, the characters can report back to Botswan Tato. One character of the player's choosing must deliver a spoken report of their orientation. If they perform well, give this character inspiration. The last task. After hearing the report, Tato informs the group that there's one last task they must perform before they're dismissed for launch. A spell jamming trader has delivered a fresh shipment of supplies to the Academy, including a crate addressed to the Academy head, Mert the Merciless, also known as Old Wolf. Tato gives each character a gold security helmet, then orders the character to deliver the crate to Mert's room in the bridge quarters. She explains that the old wolf was up late entertaining visiting dignitaries from the Rock of Brawl and is feeling more than a little worse for wear. As such, the character should keep the noise to a respectable level. The character's missions has two directives. Avoid damaging or tampering the crate in any way. Obey Mert's orders to the letter. If the characters carry the crate to Mert's room, proceed to part 3. The guards at the bridge quarters nonchalantly wave them past as long as they're wearing the gold security helmets. Once the delivery has been made, the characters can retire for lunch. Shipping Crate The wooden shipping crate is about two feet on a side and bears a large label that reads, For Mert. 
It weighs roughly 100 pounds. One strong character can carry it awkwardly, or two characters can carry it easily. Unknown to anyone at the Academy, the crate secretly contains a number of hungry Neogi hatchlings. If the characters open the crate or otherwise find a way to divine its contents before visiting Mert's quarters, you'll need to refer to Part 3 for guidance. At your determination, the hatchlings can also gnaw their way out of the crate at any time that it feels dramatically appropriate. Part 3 Intruder Alert While fulfilling the orders given to them by Boswain Tato, the characters meet Mert the Merciless and discover that someone has sent the head of Spelljammer Academy a most deadly gift. Mert's Quarters On arrival at the door to Mert's Quarters, the characters hear loud snoring from within. Feel free to give the players your best snoring impression. Knocking or pushing on the door reveals that it's partly ajar and causes it to creak open. Describe the following if the characters peer inside. Mert's quarters are sumptuously decorated with velvet curtains, gold fittings and oak panels. A cauldron-sized fishbowl stands along one wall filled with squirming octopuses. On the opposite wall, a table bears a topographic map of the Sword Coast. Near the door, a walk-in wardrobe stands partly open, gold light spilling out from within. Peering in, you see the old wolf himself, sprawled over a giant leathery bed and snoring loudly. Fishbowl The fishbowl contains a number of tiny harmless octopuses. If the bowl is broken, it has an AC of 5 with 2 hit points and immunity to poison and psychic damage. Each creature within 5 feet of the tank is knocked prone and soaked through by the sudden outflow of water. Topographic Map Close inspection of the map on the table reveals that it is set with tiny figurines representing troops. The figurines magically animate whenever a creature moves within 5 feet of the table, playing out a mock battle between giants and dragons. Disturbing the battle is dangerous though. Anyone who touches the table or a figurine is targeted by tiny catapults with plus 4 to hit, dealing 3 bludgeoning damage on a hit. After making 3 such attacks, the catapults run out of ammunition. Walk-in wardrobe This magical wardrobe ensures that Mert always looks resplendent for his duties. Any character that enters the wardrobe is sucked into an extra-dimensional space and removed from play until the start of its next turn, where it emerges from the wardrobe having been treated to a full makeover, featuring fresh makeup and perfume, coiffured hair and pressed clothes. The process is invigorating and any creature that undertakes it while injured is restored to full hit points. Waterbed Mert's leathery bed shifts and rocks, and close inspection reveals that it's filled with water. If the waterbed is damaged, it has an armor class of 5 with 3 hit points and immunity to poison and psychic damage. Each creature within 5 feet of it is knocked prone and soaked through by the sudden outflow of water. Opening the Crate When Mert gets any sense of the character's presence, he opens a single bloodshot eye and speaks. Oh, uh, Biometer's buttocks, my head is exploding. If you come here to drop off that thing, just put it on the rug there. Open it as quietly as you can. And let me die in peace. At that point, the characters hear a strange thump from within the crate. If Mert is asked about the crate, he has no idea who it's from or what's inside. He impatiently demands that the cadets open it up before he regurgitates last night's dinner, which he has no memory of eating. When the characters open the crate, describe the following. As you open the crate's lid, a cacophony of high-pitched squeals emanate from within. Grotesque creatures scuttle into the light. Ugly cat-sized monsters with hairy spider-like bodies and eel-like heads. Mert yelps in shock, tumbles from his bed and lands heavy on the floor, dragging his bed covers with him. Dealing with the hatchlings. Eight Neogi hatchlings emerge from hiding inside the crate, positioning themselves around it before combat begins. Each round, the hatchlings attack any characters they can reach. As tiny creatures, two hatchlings can occupy a single five-foot space if needed. Due to his hungover state, 
Mert is unlikely to participate in this combat. He is a high level character and won't be at risk here, so no stats are required for him. Mert's Rude Awakening Even on the best of days, Mert requires a remarkable amount of time to rise from his bed. Though energized by the imminent threat of death, it takes the old wolf a full 30 seconds or 5 rounds to mobilize his hungover body. Each turn on initiative count 20, losing initiative ties, update the players on Mert's situation using the relevant entry from the table below. If any hatchlings remain alive after 6 rounds, Mert swiftly skewers them with his rapier and brings the combat to an end. On round 1, Mert rolls about on the floor, trying to unravel himself from the bed covers. On round two, Mert hops around in his underwear, trying to pull on his breeches. On round three, Mert rushes for his belt and rapier, but his breeches slip down on root and sent him sprawling. On round four, breeches around his ankles, Mert crawls on all floors for his belt and rapier. On round five, Mert pulls his belt and breeches with much huffing and puffing. On round six, Mert pulls his blade from its scabbard and shouts, Ha! Then accidentally yanks his belt off in the process, causing his breeches to slip down again. Aftermath The sound of battle in Mert's quarters alerts the guards just as the fight is winding down. As the last hatchlings expire, the characters hear alarms sounding throughout the bridge quarters followed by the thunder of booted feet as security forces converge on Mert's room. Mert is furious. Who dares to try to have him killed? His day is ruined. He swears that heads will roll once he finds out who's behind this outrage. As Mert is blowing off steam, Master Blip appears at the door. Describe the following. It's difficult to tell, but the autonome looks worried. His bronze moustache hangs lower than usual and his mechanical eyes have sunk in their sockets. With regret, Master Mert, this attack was merely a diversion. While our forces were being drawn here, more burglaries were reported across the academy. Our thief has struck again. Treasure. Once all the excitement has subsided, Mert breathlessly fishes around in a nearby backpack and draws forth a pouch, from which he digs out a handful of golden ingots. He tosses an ingot worth 50 gold pieces to each of the characters with slightly winded thanks and a murmured plea for their discretion regarding his state before and during the fight. Mert the Merciless, Academy Head Human Adventurer, Retired and Head of the Spelljammer Academy Mert was a loudmouth rogue with a reputation as an adventurer of Philanderer. The old wolf rose to serve as one of the masked lords of Waterdeep and became a close advisor to Lael Silverhand, the open lord of Waterdeep. The extensive wealth he squealed away as a politician ultimately forced him to flee the city and seek refuge far to the south. Mert enjoys the finer things in life, but remains stout of heart and quick with a sword. Toril is an island adrift in a sea of chaos. It must be protected at all costs. Ooh, is that cake? Ending the adventure With the news that the thief has struck again, this adventure comes to an end. Wrap up by informing the players that their characters are dismissed to their quarters. Any security helmets in their possession must be returned to the guards before the characters can leave. The characters can rest and recuperate before the next stage of their training, as the story continues in the next adventure, Trial by Fire. Character Advancement the characters advance to level 2 upon completing this adventure.